Hello everyone. Welcome back to the escape pod and thank you for escaping with us. That's Andrew. I'm Alex. And as always, with great power comes great heartbreak ability. That's right. Our hearts are broken. Um, we understand that many of you may be suffering or very upset with this just very troubling news and we just want you to know that our hearts go out to you and we are grieving with you. I guess for those of you that do not know, underrated Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery is unfortunately no longer a Chicago Bear. He signed a three-year, $18 million deal with the Detroit Lions. It's so sad. It's the end of an era. Right. Underrated Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery. I can't say enough about you. Uh, but if I could just speak to underrated Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery one last time, I would say you will be missed, but never forgotten. So, so, I thought that just to start off this podcast, we should have a moment of silence for underrated Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery. You have inspired us, and we will move forward making people happy with the podcast, because that's what we need in this time. This is for you. Underrated Chicago Bears running back Dave Montgomery. This is for you. All right. Woo! Hey, it's Andrew, the co-host and editor of the pod. Just hopping in really quickly to let you know that about halfway through this episode, we stop censoring. Uh, we have a guest on. We uh, we get really passionate. So if um, naughty words or curse words are not your thing, we totally understand. We try to keep uh, the podcast somewhat clean, especially in terms of uh, censoring certain words. So again, if that's not your thing, uh, you can skip out on this episode or at least skip out on the second half. And uh, if you're ready for some crazy debates and crazy fun conversations, stick around and I think you'll enjoy this episode, but wanted to give a heads up. So we've got a guest today. Yeah, first yes. one ever. Yes. For our first guest, we have pulled out all of the stops. I mean, you could say we blew our load uh, prematurely. That's my least favorite thing you say. We couldn't have gotten better for our first real guest. I mean, it's only down from here. This individual is the movie guy to well over 3 million people, along with countless others who just haven't pressed the follow button yet. This rising star has hosted as many red carpets as Ryan Seacrest, interviewed as many superstars as David Letterman, and been viewed more times and by more people than the Super Bowl. And yet, in my opinion, this person's strongest achievement is what they have done for change. And they have shown everyone in the world that you can do whatever you want. Follow your freaking dreams. So, ladies and gentlemen, the podcast certainly wouldn't be here without this individual. Give it up for Straw Hat. Goofy! Those people were not paid to cheer <laughs> no, at all. No, no. Not at all. Uh, they, they committed. They thank committed. You. I you literally called them in here to do that. So Welcome. Thanks yes. for being here. Yes. I've been waiting you. to come on here. I already, I'm here on a mission. Uh oh. Uh, I've been seeing some hot takes, specifically with you over here. <laughs> We'll get into it. We'll get into yeah, it. But yeah. I, I saw the first episode and I was like, Fuck, I got to be a part of that. Yeah. So thank we you for having it. me. We We're appreciate it. We appreciate it. Unbelievably excited to have you. You have no idea. I can barely breathe. <laughs> I'm out of breath. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. The, the first thing, the first time I saw you after we started the podcast, you came up to me and you're like, yo, this guy's crazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was like, how the fuck? Where'd you find him? Like, <laughs> yeah. And yet. The, the most controversial take to ever come from the pot is somehow you like an Avengers. Yeah, and, and the Greatest, greatest showman. showman. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I said those were my two favorite movies of all time. And oh, of all time. Oh, and Greatest went, Showman. Went viral for I it. did hear that one. I did hear yeah, that Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. We could talk I, about I that have, later. I have my reasons, okay? Yeah. I'm not a complete I will crazy tell you, person. we do agree on one one of your takes, though. Let's hear it. Uh, the Last Jedi. Yeah. Absolutely love The Last yeah, Jedi. Yeah, I, I think Last it's the, I think it's the best Star Wars movie outside of Empire Strikes Back. Whoa. Outside, You yes. think it's better than New Hope? You think yes. it's Wow. wow! I think it's better than New Hope. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I do think New Hope is better, but it's my third. It's clearly no, my third. I, I love Last Jedi. My think... favorite Star Wars movie is Rogue One. Let me preface that right now. He hates it. I love Rogue One. See, now we're back to Square <laughs> One. We're it back to last. Square One. It, it wasn't could, last. It was last. Yeah. You know, but Last Jedi gets way more hate than it deserves. I Absolutely. think it's just people's holding on to nostalgia to the point where Ryan Johnson had to put in a line where Adam Driver said, "You're still." Holding on, yeah. <laughs> let go. Yeah. He's talking to the audience, and then the fans are like, "No!" Like, <laughs> no. even Scream had to f- it, like throw some shots at the Star Wars fandom because yeah. of um, Last Jedi. So yeah. you know, it yeah. rippled. It was a ripple effect. Well, you know what yeah. I always say. You know what everybody always says. Nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's why That's I'm not true. a Star Wars fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like this case. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they get you. All right, so uh, we're gonna start off with a good old interview, but. Uh, we interview a little bit differently on here. Mm-hmm. We've got this little game called Hot Seat. We've played it a couple times. Um, our, our, our fans seem to be receptive towards it. And so we're going to have a timer. And me and Andrew are just going to go back and forth. All right, so I got the timer. Yep. How, um, many, how long are we doing? Well, normally you and I do three minutes, so I said at least give him four. I, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, uh, I was thinking five, if possible. But you're the boss. Me. We'll, we'll do four, and if, we, if, we're, if we're not feeling if done, not, we'll keep going. All right, no stress. I can all right, all right. Would you like to start or yeah, shall I? Yeah, let's learn a little bit about Straw Hat Goofy. Absolutely. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Starting the timer in three, two, one. Here we go. Um, what's the, your favorite thing that you've done this year? Favorite mm. thing that I've done? Oh, shoot. Oh, that's a good, because I've done a lot already. Yeah. Like, I opened the year up hanging out with the Megans. Uh, mm. I think it was I think it was the uh-huh. Chargers Rams game. It, was, yeah. it was, literally was the first thing I did this year where they said, hey, you want to hang out with the Megans? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, we've gotten some women to dress up like Megan, mm-hmm. and they're gonna take over this uh, the this football game. I don't even watch football, yeah. but I was like, I'm down, right? And it was just really cool that um, we just literally just hung around all day, and they were so in character the entire time. They were just creepy, didn't say a word, Incredible. just staring, Incredible. and we we're getting like drinks, and we we're just hanging out on the field. And it was my first time at SoFi Stadium as mm-hmm. well. So, like, I got to experience that for the first time as well as do this crazy thing. And then the content that came out of that was, like, oh, yeah. insane. I can't imagine. I think one of the videos hit 3 million on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And it hit, uh, I want to say, 5 million on Instagram, mm-hmm. which was crazy. Mm-hmm. And, it, yeah, I think that was probably, like, my favorite thing because I was just relaxed and didn't have to. It wasn't a lot of pressure on It's that. crazy. I'm a Los Angeles Rams fan. And so I was mm-hmm. watching that game at home because um, I, <laughs> I, I hadn't moved yet. <laughs> And they showed you on the broadcast. It was awesome. And I was like, oh, I know. I watch that guy all the time. Little did I know. Three months later, I'm sitting here with you. Crazy. Probably my favorite piece of content to make was like realizing that I was on the broadcast. (laughs) And like I got like hundreds of texts like, yo, are you at the Rams game right now? Like you're on the screen. And uh, my favorite piece of content was me like show somebody like, screen recorded that like they mm-hmm. screen recorded like me on broadcast and so i kind of took that moment and i did like a little freeze frame and i played uh uh riley riley o- baba o'reilly from the from the who and it freezes on my face next to the megans and like it has my intro yep that's me <laughs> hey, with the megans on national tv you're probably wondering how i got here it's yeah, my yeah. favorite incredible that's great that's great uh what's your favorite mcu movie oh sh- so, uh, I want to say Infinity War. Yeah, me too. Probably Infinity. I think Infinity. it's the most complete MCU yeah, movie me too. for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, real quick, what do you think about Megan? I love Megan. I think it's fun. I think the I think the movie itself is a bad movie, right. but Megan herself is such a great character that she carries the film so yeah. well. The film would have been way better if it was rated R, but yeah. like I feel like I the, laughed way more than I thought I would. Favorite musical artist? I'll, I'll give you a couple. So all time, uh, number one is Michael Jackson. Number two is Stevie Wonder. Yeah, oh yeah, Ooh. yeah. People sleep on Stevie Wonder. I feel like, and that's kind of a travesty. Mm-hmm. But uh, currently, Kendrick Lamar is kind of my guy. Yep. Like he's just on another level when it comes to like his musical prowess and just like the way he thinks and puts it into music. It's like he's a fucking puzzle maker making songs. Cool. It's weird. Plus, what, he's from Compton. What's your favorite? Uh, uh, Kendrick album favorite Kendrick album oh my god see I really fell in love with To Pimp a Butterfly very early on I feel like I've been following him since he was K-Dot but mm-hmm. To Pimp a Butterfly was like my first like whoa like this whoa but uh, I know people are gonna say good kid Mad City but you can't really choose a wrong one but mm-hmm. you gotta I I gotta go with his Pulitzer Prize winning damn damn yeah damn like 
there's just something about Damn that like really just spoke to me like personally, and so like I'm I'm gonna have to go with Damn on. I that think T Pam to Pimp a Butterfly is the best rap album of all time. Oh, that's see. Yeah, like that's I great. like I, yeah, I I I was hoping you would yeah, say you, you would bring up T Pam like it's, it's, man, I'm it is you. like a masterpiece. Like yeah. it is. Mwah. We're a nerd podcast. We should be talking about this as much. <laughs> two more but, each. Yeah, two more each. Okay. Um, What's uh, something you want to accomplish in the next week? Next week, very small potatoes. I would love to become friends with Keanu Reeves. Yeah, um, I'll be Are, I'll be interviewing him uh, at the red carpet for the John Wick Four premiere. So I want to like make an impression on that guy. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's like my first thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cool. I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> Yo, I think my intro was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to be friends with Duke Kaboom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Baba Yaga. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Neo. Neo. Yeah, oh, yeah. Himself and uh, Always Be Whack. My Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite movie that was of the nominated Oscar movies? Mm, my favorite of the nom. I mean, I, the simple answer is everything everywhere all at once. Mm-hmm. Like, it deserved to win. I think it would have been a shock if it didn't win. So I'm going to jump over that. I'm going to jump over that and not say that one. Uh, it's either between the Banshees of Inishirin or All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm-hmm. I love a good war movie. I feel like that one really captured like the horrors of it, and I feel like that's very cliche because all horror movies do that. But I feel like that one does it in a very specific way that really focuses on the humans. But Banshees of Inishirin, I, I I keep saying this. I'm gonna say it every time I bring it up. It's a Drake and Josh episode. The fact that we have an Oscar nominated Drake and Josh episode adjacent movie, that's pretty rad. That's pretty f- <laughs> rad. I love it. Uh, your last one and then my last one. Uh, what's, uh, what's the movie you're most excited for this year? Mm-hmm. I get this question a lot and the answer always changes. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. It was Creed 3. Creed 3 already came out and it was baller. Uh, but I think, I think, I'm going to have to say Across the Spider-Verse. Yep. yep. You know, and then Mutant Mayhem like popped in there and I was like, fuck, but I, I'm going to have to stick with Across the Spider-Verse. I yep. feel like that movie's going to be so Love good. It. Last one. All right. Kevin Feige emails you tomorrow. Okay you are going to play, he's asking you to play a role in a future MCU movie. So all the MCU is current as is. So you can't pick any of them. Who is the best case scenario? Who would you like to play the most? Human Torch. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. He was ready. That was awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. honestly, you just got, you guys caught me because I've been like wonder. I got in this question before and I mm-hmm. never had an answer because first off, there's not a lot of black characters uh, to like really choose from and I'm not big enough to be Luke Cage. There's already a Black Panther. Miles Morales, I'm too old. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just kind of like, who the fuck? And I said, like, let's gender, let not gender bend, but let's like race swap it a little bit. Yeah. And I feel like I have the kind of like, charm of a Johnny Storm or at least I like to think the age and everything like the youthful energy and you know it would be fun to play that character to just kind of literally be a hothead you know and plus like you know maybe if I play like a hothead who gets ladies maybe I'll get ladies (laughs) (laughs) he's thought this through I thought this through through. they won't see me they'll see the human torture so it's like a mind trick Cool. So we're going to move on to our next segment, but uh, make sure to follow everyone here on Instagram. We've got a Discord now. We're thinking about starting a Patreon. If you're interested in that, let us know. Um, everything that you're about to hear, or most of it, came from people on Instagram or Discord giving us suggestions of what we should argue about. So if you want to help us with that, join the Discord, follow us on Instagram. Also, the button. Yes, uh, we didn't introduce this earlier, but the button, every time uh, somebody presses the button, I press the button, I can say, Andrew, hot take, and Andrew will have to give a hot take. I could say, straw hat, hot take, and he just has to give a hot take. You can have said it before or not. Um, uh, I will try not to say something I've said before, because for whatever reason, all my takes are hot takes. Yeah, well, they're garbage. For whatever reason. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So, we've got... um We've explained this before. We've done this once before. This is the agree or disagree game. I'll basically read a statement, um, and then whether we agree or disagree, we will t- flip that around, say three, two, one, and show what we... Uh, we will also say who's say it out agreed loud. and disagreed as well. And then if we all agree, then everything's listeners. happy and everything fun. Happy yes, and then you, we can just move on. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But uh, if there's some sort of agreement, we can fight. Okay. All right, let's see how I'll it goes. All right, here we go. I, he's picked these. I, I'm as in the dark as you. I okay. have no idea what we're talking okay. about. So, okay, right. so he's the one who's like in charge yeah. of our fates here. Well, yeah. Always. Got it. Okay. Again, most of these are I did not make. So this is from fans, but I did choose them. I'm ready. Let's all right. do it. DreamWorks Animation has the best animated films and better characters than Disney. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Yep, disagree, one. disagree. Yeah. DreamWorks is, does a great job. They have great they, stuff. Absolutely, but yeah. Not, not Disney, not Pixar. Usually, I think people remember 
most of like the good of DreamWorks, mm-hmm. but they really want to forget the bad. Like they like uh, I might get hate for this and say this as a hot take. Turbo's not that great. No. Name the characters from Ants. Besides yeah. Z. Yeah. yeah. I, no one cares. Him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't read the Bible, name the characters from Prince of Egypt, even though that's a banger. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good it's movie. A yeah. movie. I think um, also people really remember like the most recent stuff. Like yeah. last year, DreamWorks was better, but like Disney yeah. has such a history. It's a it's a storied history that you really can't beat. Yeah. Like at this point, their most obscure characters are like iconic in and of themselves. Yes. I yeah. mean. How many Baymax plush toys do I see every day? All the time. And Stitch, still, Stitch, well, Sti- still. still, yeah, that's Stitch a is good incredible. Point. Like, and he's like part of that era where like Disney wasn't even doing that well. Yes, that's what I was, people forget about that. Shit. But when uh, DreamWorks isn't doing that well, they're really not doing that well. <laughs> like, the only character I remember from Home is O, and that's because it's the most simple name ever yes people forget rihanna oh, was man. in that movie rihanna and jim parsons rihanna and jim parsons plays I, re- I remember the trailers for home i, I said no i said <laughs> no i said no i ain't watching yeah. that yeah. <laughs> all right dc has better animated productions and comics compared to marvel but marvel takes movies three the fact oh. that you threw comics in there changes yeah, my answer yeah, completely. I was about to throw up. I was about to throw completely. up. Completely. Yeah. If we're doing no comics and just animated content, it's an easy agree for me. Yeah. DC makes much better animated content, but I, how are it's, you going to beat all the X Men comics? Yeah. Any of I'm the. A, I'm going to say I'm disagree, disagree because okay. the comics was thrown in there. I feel like you can compare the two the two comics. Like, I feel like the comics are about even. Oh, but Watchmen yeah. is DC. DC has a lot of good stuff. Yeah, they do have a lot of good stuff. Dark Knight you know Returns what? is my favorite comic. I think of all you time. know what? I think DC takes them on animated productions. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. But what did the question say clearly better? You it just says has better animated productions and you know comics. What? I'm gonna change my answer to I'm gonna agree. Cause like I just started thinking about like DC's like rebirth run, run mm-hmm. and everything kind of like after that. Mm-hmm. And Marvel is like just so stuck on like big events that kind of like muddy everything because they feel like everything needs to be an event. Mm-hmm. So I would say DC kind of edges Marvel on comics, but they absolutely blow them out of the water on animated right, content. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. that's what pushing the needle for me. I just there's too many Marvel comics I adore. I mean, some of the X Men comics, like the. Oh my god, the original. Are we talking current or are we talking like just ever? No, yeah. I'm ever. thinking ever. Ever? See, now that's like, hard. Like House of M is one of my favorite comics House of, of M, Old like Man Logan. All the X-Men stuff. Old Man Logan. Amazing. House of With X. With the dinosaur? Like, yeah, yes. no, of like, course. The X-Men are like, fucking killing it. Like, uh, just Avengers the, Disassembled. Oh, don't even get me. I mean, Civil War, yeah. Like, what, like Winter Civil Soldier. Like, I'm just saying Marvel has had some bangers that people forget about. Because they're not the movie. I mean, World War Hulk? I mean, Jonathan Hickman's whole run on the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, like, you know, you can stand that up to anything that DC has put up, like has. So also, Daredevil, Man Without Fear, like da- Daredevil, oh, like uh, the street level stuff, and all Pre- the Spider-Man comics. Ta- Ta-Nehisi Coates is Black uh, Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? Let's not pretend that Marvel doesn't have good comics. No, you know, no, it's, yeah. they, they have some great comics. I'm sticking but, with my disagree, but it's close. I'm gonna have to okay. say disagree yeah. too. I, I like flip flop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But That's true. All right, we got we got some. Oh, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. Mine's coming up. I mean, yeah. that's why Boss Man's here. Toby is the best Spider-Man. Three, two, one. I'm disagree. just putting it out. Whoa. Hard you disagree. guys. <laughs> Hard disagree. Fuck you guys. No I just got to this argument with Koi last I, night. I know. I and heard Megan. You. I'm ready for this. No okay. Okay. Who's your Spider-Man? Tom. Tom is by far the best. First off, Tom, I love you. We've met. You don't even remember me, so I don't even <laughs> found, feel this bad about this. Tom, and I hate to say it again, is Tony Stark Jr. It took three movies for him to get to where he is. It took three movies for him to get to where he is. And first off, Tom is, oh, hey, Mr. Stark. Uh-huh. He's Morty. He's Morty. He's Morty. Morty. He's, oh, my God. And Tony Stark is Rick. That's what it is. And I love him, and I love that we finally got to where he is now. However... I never got the underdog sense from Tom. I never did. I got it in the in, outside of Civil War. Civil War is the best that Tom has ever been. Civil they, War they is the best representation of Spider-Man he, they've ever done. He, and that's true. And he's great in Infinity War, but too. But you got to keep that same energy, bud. You got to keep I, that same energy. I think Homecoming energy. is awesome, and I think No it Way is Home awesome. is one of the best MCU movies. It is awesome. Like I, Debatable. But <laughs> for No Way Home. But look, Toby, man, look, let me see. Toby, and I've been saying this all the time. Oh, Toby, so Toby. We think of Peter Parker, right? We think of Peter Parker, Spider-Man as the underdog. He's the guy who struggles to be Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man leaks into his real life and it makes him suffer for it. Tobey Maguire suffers all throughout those freaking movies. They nailed okay? that. They nailed that. Nails it. He nails you those performances. You disagreed with this. They, Why are you? I, the only re- on the me. only reason I disagree is because I refuse to choose anymore. I don't. I, I don't. I don't like. I've got because I'm dre- like because I dress up as Spider Man all the time. I get this question literally every day. I can see arguments for all, and but I am agreeing with all of his reasoning. I'm just saying, man. Toby as Peter Parker, like he 
nails that character. Yeah, I get it. He doesn't make as many jokes as like the Spider-Man. That's not even my main issue with it. What's your issue? My main issue is he's got a chubby man boy face (laughs) and he's always crying in those movies. He's not always crying. He's not always crying. Parker cries. I'm sorry. Peter Parker cries. Andrew Garfield cries, but he cries the proper amount. Well, Andrew Garfield. Okay, I love Andrew Garfield. I love Andrew Garfield, but he's got bad movies. Look, look, I say this all the time and I know people, oh, he's too cool. First off, Andrew Garfield skateboarding through hallways bad like bad bad like he doesn't give underdog at all him and flash <laughs> yeah. are comparable but but like, if you switch those two yes. you I wouldn't you couldn't tell the Garfield difference it's like a f-ing jock absolutely I and then don't even get me started on the f-ing smolder to gwen stacy like abercrombie and fish model versus like a nerd who wins girls over with his charm of being a nerd where they go huh you actually are pretty cute no he's giving her the yeah. do you want to like I don't know. No, yeah, like, he's way too attractive. He's yeah. way too attractive. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, if Peter's but, attractive, I get it, but... But, as Spider-Man, does Andrew not have Peter? Andrew... Or Toby? Andrew is the best Spider-Man in the suit mm-hmm. that the we've quips. ever had. No the quips. quips he the quips. The physicality. The physicality. He is like, spider I mean, circles around the other two in absolutely. No Way Home. And don't yes. get me wrong. Andrew is the best actor of the three. Like, I'm not going to refute that. However, when you're talking about the story that you are given and the way you knock it out of the park in the story that you are given, the reason why we love Spider-Man 2 so much is because everything had to come together to make that work. And Tobey Maguire is an essential cog in making that work. You never go to Spider-Man 2 and say, I love this Toby's f***ing up. You're not going to say that. You're not. And that makes a great Spider-Man because you have to nail that out off the park. I love Toby and I'm agreeing with literally everything you're saying, but I think that Tom nails it. I just, I love Tom. Does Tom ever like sacrifice any, at any point until No Way Home for you? Because he's had like four to five appearances before No Way Home. He doesn't sacrifice, I agree, in Civil War or Infinity War, his side character uh, 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 appearances, but I think he sacrifices plenty in Homecoming. Because at the end of the day, yes. right, he's in he's in high school. That's first of all, first time we've ever seen him properly in high school, where it's not just fifty year olds in high school, where their teacher is younger than them and whatever. But anyway, um, in homecoming, he is consistently sacrificing. He wants to go to this dance. He wants to do this. He wants to hang out with Liv. He wants to he wants to not he wants to not go in the hoodie suit and try and stop this plane from being robbed. But he has I'm to stop you right there. He wants to be a Avenger. That's all he wants. That's all he then wants. Then why does he turn he it down le- at the end of the le- moment? He then le- why does he turn it down at the end of the moment? That's the point. That's his arc. Because he wants to be an Avenger. Now he doesn't want to be anymore. No. The whole movie, he's like, I want to be an Avenger. And then he even says, I don't even have to go to this school, bro. Like, he doesn't want to do normal kid that's the thing about Spider-Man wants to be normal. He wants the girl. I feel like he does, does not want to be normal. He does not. He wants to be the opposite, which is the Avengers. That's why he's constantly calling Tony Stark, going like, hey. Texting happy. Texting happy all day because he wants one thing. That's not Spider-Man. That's every kid's dream. I get it, but that's not Spider-Man. We were talking about this earlier. At the end of No Way Home is when we finally feel Spider-Man. We get the normal suit that he made himself swinging through New York. He's in an apartment that he's struggling to pay for yep. by himself. Yep. Now I feel like we're starting with Spidey. Yes. It's an interesting, like they tried something different with the MCU trilogy, and I understand why they did it. I just didn't necessarily like it that I, much. I love how we started off with Tom Holland, and everyone was so happy that we weren't getting an origin story, but we were actually getting an origin yes. story. Because Aunt May finally gave him the Uncle Ben lesson where he finally like learned that. And I was just kind of like, they duped us. All right. <laughs> they, duped, they duped us. Here we go. <laughs> you good? We ready? Next yes. one. Clint should have died instead of Natasha. Ooh. Mm. Three, two, one. Disagree. Yeah, disagree. Disagree. That disagree. was a great ending for yeah, her. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, like Natasha had gotten more like screen time. Like we've kind of like been with her journey a little bit more. And Clint, even after Hawkeye, I still think has a far way to go for us to like truly connect with that character. I don't think we've yeah, like, we, learned we st- enough. We still got a Black Widow movie, and it would have like the Hawkeye show wouldn't have made sense if, if that had happened. And I'm yeah. Glad we the Hawkeye show. I disagreed with that statement. I. Th- Still think it would have been Natasha, but I do want to make a statement that I think it would have been perfectly fine if they did kill Clint, mm-hmm. because he does murder all those people, and oh, so yeah, it true. would <laughs> like it would make sense to not have this mass murderer. I just I, I'm gonna say this: Natasha was also a murderer. Also true. That's just, I'm just they, they, it was just you know. recent. That's why I remember. <laughs> no, that. You're, no, you're that's, absolutely that's, right. And that's the only right. reason. You're yeah. absolutely right. Thanos is a better villain than Ultron. 
Oh. Three, two, one. I think we're all going to agree with that. Yeah, that's pretty what easy. What kind of question was that? Do, do they believe that Ultron's a better villain? Than I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Is that comic speaking? It's still Thanos, but... It's still Thanos, yeah. yeah I don't, I don't think Ultron I'm wins thinking. in any capacity. No, yeah, probably. Unless we're talking about, like, Infinity Ultron, and we're having a different... This one, we're going back to Spider-Man for just a second. MCU Spider-Man lacks the authenticity of what made Toby and Andrew great. Okay. Three, Three two, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no way. Yeah. Again, I, it's the same conversation yeah. we had, yeah. so we, we can don't... move on. Uh, he uh, is the most privileged f***ing Spider-Man ever. Until No Way Home, and then everything changes. Yeah. Killmonger Ooh. would be mm. the better replacement for T'Challa as Black Panther. Oh, my God. Three, two, one, boom. Disagree. Yeah. Disagree. Yeah. I understand what they're trying to say here. Can I, can I say something? Let Killmonger go. <laughs> Like, he was right. We get it. Like, but you don't want that man running your country. His arc was destructive. He destruct selfly, and he's out of there. Yeah. It was a beautiful arc. I know you love Michael B. Jordan, but just let it. Great oh. villain. Great, Great villain. villain. He's one of the better MCU villains. He for is. Sure. And, and it was two, in, in the era of, like, that was still when we were consistently getting bad MCU villains. Yeah. Like, where it was just, like, Loki at the top, and yeah. then you got a bunch of Malekith and Ronins and everything. He was one of the first MCU villains in a long time where I was like, and he felt And he felt real. He mm. felt real. He was Absolutely. a kid from Oakland. A Absolutely. kid from Oakland with a real grind against Wakanda. From, it's because of Killmonger that I want to see a Luke Cage show where they deal with the ramifications of knowing that there is a Wakanda that could have helped when there's, like, black people in oh. Harlem, like, fighting for the soul of Harlem. Like, who's going to be the hero of Harlem? But you're going, like, wait a minute. There's like an advanced nation full of black people that could have helped this whole time. And then knowing that there's also war dogs, most likely in Harlem, mm -hmm. I want that show because Killmonger was such a great villain. I support Team Cap. Oh, boy. Three, Ready? two, one. Disagree. Nah, get All right, it. we got to get into this shit. Okay, we got to well, get into we, this. We, we have argued about this on the pod. We, we, I, don't, I don't know if it's come out yet. I haven't seen this episode, so I this is new <laughs> for me. No, 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 no. no. I, I, it's very simple. I, I think that, so Cap is correct in that movie. And I think that the the Sokovia Gordes as is are wrong. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I don't agree with the tribunal, the the council that no. decides where the they should go that or whatever. Ross is ahead of that when yes. he's the one who created the abomination. Certainly yep. not. Exactly. So I completely agree with with. So Cap in that movie is correct, but I do think that they do the Avengers as they are in the MCU need to be put in check. And the fact that they are a com Why? completely independent acting like as their own, they're not a side, they're, they're from all different nations. There's, it's just like a concussion. Most of them are US based. I just feel like very easily, you've got the situation in Lagos that need, you, ha you cannot have the situation in Lagos and not have any ram ram ramifications for that. And Team Cap's whole thing is that there aren't ramifications. Who started the situation in Lagos though? Who started it? Crossbones. Was it the Avengers? No, Crossbones. Then the Avengers don't need to put in check. It should be Crossbones or whatever the government yeah, created. Like, crossbones. We didn't blow up that building. That wasn't like- But it was her mistake. No, because no. he was about to blow himself yeah, up Yeah, he was gonna blow himself on the ground. Okay, he, he did <laughs> she it 50 feet in the up. air. That, I don't, I he was could, about to blow himself up anyway. That's the, not her. The fault. reason I'm a little frustrated with Civil War is because, again, I haven't read a ton of comics, but Civil War Civil is War one that is I have, amazing. and I think Civil War does a much better job explaining Captain America's reasoning, uh, exploring why he's more right, the the things that Tony Stark does that is wrong and morally like messed up oh, during it's that. Really up, and yes. then and they and, and in the movie they really focus on like Bucky mistreating uh Tony and like the the, the trauma yes. there and exploring why Tony is right. So I understand why people who have just watched the movies are more team uh Tony, team well, Iron Man. Not just watch the movies. The MCU uh canon is completely different from the comics canon. Yeah. In the comics, I'm completely team cap. Yeah, that's what, I, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. They right, do a better job of like laying out both sides and yep. why they feel the way they feel. Yep, yep, but yep, yep. in in the comics the Avengers and and X Men and every are in check by a government. They do have guide. They do have more rules. The X Men are not. They're kind of like their own independent entity, and they actually sit out the Civil War when they're approached by both teams. I think Wolverine is the only is one of the only ones that said like I'm gonna be on it because he's like kind of an Avenger. But they do they board. do uh, they they do work with the government. They pay taxes. They they like have real regulations. Every hero in the comics because they have the time to explain it has has a lot of regulations in the comics. You like explain that because like I said, they don't have time to explain it in the movies. So there isn't any explanation for what kind of regulations they deal with. And in my opinion, they have to have some kind of regulation. Well, the way I see it in the movies is that they were pretty much like this, 
this is my favorite quote like from a really bad movie but Baywatch Yaya Abdul-Mateen the second says when you guys like when we chase guys we're cops when we chase them it's a pursuit when you guys chase them you're just a bunch of guys chasing another bunch of guys yeah. and that's what the Avengers are they're literally just some superpower people that came together mm -hmm. and they chase bad guys all over the mm -hmm. world with no like official badges or like whatever they mm -hmm. just decided this is what we're gonna do mm -hmm. and I understand that maybe you might need a liaison to be like hey like become official like whatever whatever however it flies in the face of what people tell you what a hero is, right? You know how they tell you, like, anyone can be a hero, anybody. With great power comes great responsibility. Everybody hears this shit. Everyone can do the right thing. All of a sudden, that goes out the window mm -hmm. when the people who are doing the right thing, right? Because the cops can't do shit. We saw that in the first Avengers. Correct. When the, when the cops said, like, oh, the National Guard is coming. Do they even know what's happening mm -hmm. here? Yeah. Do we? They're clueless. And if it wasn't for the Avengers, they would be toast yeah. and they would have been toast at the hands of their own government because they was about it's to so, blow the shit yeah up. that's what i'm saying why do we want to give them power and then at the same time ross said remember what happened in new york do you yeah. remember what happened in new york <laughs> that's all you would have killed right there you, you would have killed won. millions of people you know what i'm saying but if it the, wasn't for us but tony was the one who stopped it so uh, what i'm saying is is that yes we understand that these are people that have who literally just decided like oh we're gonna go to russia we're gonna fight like hydra and all that type of but at the same time you know who else is gonna do it. Yep. And the way I see the government, you guys are already corrupt as f Hydra was just revealed just last year. Hydra, Hydra is a thing. That and you got true. this motherfucking guy saying, oh, I need to be in charge. Didn't you create the abomination? <laughs> Didn't Hydra just pop out last year? Yep. I think we're fucking good. At that point, they should have respected the Avengers because who, who fucking uncovered? Sorry. Who, who uncovered that? It was Steve. Yeah. And Steve, Steve is usually right in these type of things. Don't yeah, fucking give me the Cap, whole Team Don't give Cap, me the whole Team fucking Cap, thing. Team Cap. Don't, give, don't give me the whole Bucky thing. You got Hawkeye who was also under my control killing folk. Yeah. And Bucky was under my control killing folk. But why are you getting that? Why are you coming after Bucky? Yeah. You may have sold me. You may have sold me. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. I've never thought about it with like the government and the nuke and everything. That really sold me. The government's fucking crazy. They, they always suck have been. In they the MCU. And, they, and this is before the Hydra thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They no. always suck. Yeah, you, you may have sold and, me. And you want to give them the Avengers? Yeah, you may have sold me. You know what All I'm right. saying? I'm going to try to get through the last few of these because we are, we got to move along. But we're going to go through the last few of these mm -hmm. really quickly. Are we ready? Multiverse of Madness, top 10 MCU. Huh. Three, Three, two, two one. one. Yep. Disagree. Yep. Yep. Disagree. I mean, I, you, I like. Is it bottom ten for you? I would say bottom ten, though. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm have to look at what that ten is, yeah. but I would. Say I like it better 10. than most people. They got a lot of hate, but it's yeah. definitely not top ten. Yeah. Star Wars timeline is harder to keep up with the DCEU timeline. Star Wars is harder to keep up with than the DCEU. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Disagree. Yeah, yeah. disagree. Yeah, I don't think DC even knows what the DC timeline is. <laughs> at, at I, I mean, I, like, I think Star Wars is pretty clear. I think what? the casual fans. Mm -hmm. Actually, can I change my answer? Really? I'm gonna say agree. Why? That's mostly because like I'm a casual Star Wars fan, mm -hmm. and so like I know there's like the Old Republic, and I know like when we say like the timeline, like you know how we have like the Mandalorian, and we have like the Bad Batch, and we have like this and this and that. Like as a casual, it's just kind of like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. however, I can pinpoint what happens in the DC timeline. It's yeah. like, oh, fucking Man of Steel popped up, and then Batman shows we'll, up, and we'll see how that up. all feels after Flashpoint. Yeah. Now, oh, when yeah. it comes to the Suicide Squad, I don't know what the fuck's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, true. Avatar: Way of Water wasn't that good of a movie. Three, two, one. I think we all. This is a strongly disagree. Come on, it was my favorite it's movie come last on. year. I got into an argument about this as well, and I understand like cultural appropriation and all that type of shit. But Robert Downey Jr. did blackface, and I love that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, sorry. Like, Way of Water is great. It yeah. works. Way of Water is awesome. Yeah. Way of Water is MCU. Awesome. MCU. Mm, I'll come back to that one. Puss in Boots: The Last Wish is overrated. Also, think we're gonna three, two, one. Disagree. Strongly disagree. We need to disagree on like like together on something. I yeah. feel like we're like bonding too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've been fighting a lot. I, I think. Oh my gosh, no, Puss in Boots, Last Wish. I know that you're a big fan of that oh, movie. I it's love that fucking, movie so much, dude. I think it's that so the good. Jiminy Cricket. Oh joke. my god, it is such a small thing, but it's amazing. So I think it's literally it's one great. of the smartest jokes I've ever seen in any movie yes. ever. To pair that character up with a villain is. Let alone the worst villain ever. I like, also want to like point out that everybody talks about death in that movie. We're not talking a lot about like big James Horner, big Horner. Yes, he's a great villain. He's yeah. a great he's villain. He's sadistic. John Mulaney is John Mulaney is so incredible. fucking great. That was weird. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's so good. He's so he's literally like his men are dying left and right, and he's just like. Yeah, and like, and the like, 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 Cricket, I'm telling you're you, horrible. That is this is horrible. Yeah. You're horrible. horrible. That's my word. 
and then, the and then the response what, what what took you so long <laughs> so incredible so fucking good incredible oh my gosh right, this is gonna be a big one uh i think we'll all agree though james gunn will make the best superman film since christopher reeves mm. Mm. Oh, hold on. I gotta think about this for a little bit. I don't. <laughs> I gotta think about this for a little bit for real. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And yeah. I expect it to be yeah. better why, than Christopher Reeves. Real quick, why was it close? I had to, I had to, like, it gave me pause because I really like Man of Steel. I really like Man of Steel. I like it a lot. It's his favorite movie of all time. It's your favorite movie of all time? It's least, my least favorite least movie of all time. Look at the wall. Dude, Man of Steel is not bad. He gave it to me as a gag gift. What is your DVD. What is your deal with Man of Steel? Superman, when growing oh up, was my favorite character. Mm -hmm. And I think, I do not know if there is a movie that takes a character, other than Last Airbender, that mm -hmm. movie, the M. Night Shyamalan movie, mm -hmm. that takes any character and, in my, from my view of Superman, just takes a complete dump on it. I think they do everything that matters wrong. Where's, where, where did they take the dump specifically? Pa Kent okay. dies because of a tornado. Okay. Right? In the comics and in the Christopher Reeve movies, he dies because of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And it teaches Clark the very valuable lesson that he cannot save everyone. Yes. You know what he can save his father from? A fucking tornado. Okay. Number two. <laughs> uh, Superman mass murders. It is not an argue, It's not a exaggeration to say that Superman like that either, is, a, is responsible for a 9-11 level event in Metropolis. Okay. Because... And, and they explain this in Batman v Superman because they got so much backlash for killing so many innocent people. Mm -hmm. But very easily you can have that battle happen somewhere where they're not killing trillions of people. Yes, Every time he lab lasers straight through a building, around a building, and knocks it down, literally 9-11-ing it, or every single time that he throws Zod into a building, at the end, when he kills Zod, which I also don't like, but at the end, <laughs> when he kills Zod to save five people, it doesn't fucking matter because he just killed 10,000. And 10,000 is the number Zack Snyder confirmed it. So that, that's that's number two and three of like the three main reasons that I, I strongly, strongly dislike that movie. But it comes down to at the end of the day, they took Superman and they made him Batman. I don't know if you saw the Superman and Lois okay. show. I haven't seen it, okay. but I did see the trailer. And when, when the kid, when he saves a car, and yes. it's, the, it's the original comic panel. And he walks Batman over to the kid after. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes right up to the kid and hands him back his hat. And here's nice the kid. Cape. Here yeah, you go, my boy. mom made it. My mom made it. And smiling and flies off. Refreshing. Man of Steel Superman never, never does that. Never smiles. He's always upset. And that is not Superman. Okay. First off. <laughs> First off, nah, listen, I agree with like a large majority of what you said, mm -hmm. right? I saw him f casually float over the oil tanker as it careened into a building behind him yep. and didn't even look behind him when the shit went nope. up in flames. Yep. I saw that shit. Yep. However, you got to look at the context for what this movie is, right? Mm -hmm. And it's different from like, oh, the happy-go-lucky boy that was raised in Kansas. His dad died of a heart attack and then, you know, he's like, I'll be a good guy. No, he's born in, this is a Superman of today's world. Right? And how many times have we always like postulate what if Superman existed in the real world? Mm -hmm. Our real world is fucked up. Yes. And I don't think he's Batman in a sense because Batman has a lot of mental health issues. I think that this is a boy going into a man who wants to be good. However, the world is so xenophobic. They're so mistrusting of just people crossing borders. Fuck mm -hmm. if you have superpowers. If you cross borders, people don't want you in their fucking like neighborhoods, mm -hmm. right? Now you have this person who possibly could be a god not only seeing you look at your own mortality, but they're also crossing the borders of the fucking world and saying, no, we're not fucking with that shit. And so Pa Kent did what any father would be and said, I don't want my son to be subjected to that just yet, mm -hmm. right? But then you have the duality of his other father who said, "You pe the people may fear you. However, you have the ability to show them the way. Like, they will join you in the sun one day. You have to rise above that. And I love the story of Superman rising above the fear of humanity to be Superman versus I'm Superman because I am. And I'm just going to lead by example. It's like, no, if Superman was a real person raised in the real world, he would recognize all this shit. He would recognize that the people would not love him. But he will also recognize that I have to hold the emotional weight of being bigger than being bigger than them and that's what makes superman great in this movie i feel like if we would have got a man of steel 2 where he becomes that and he learns his lesson from that from like fucking everything up and like going like oh shit i did a bad thing i want to be better than that i feel like because we were robbed of that man of steel doesn't get the rightful love it deserves 
Like, I feel like we just look at it in that vacuum because then we go into fucking Batman v Superman and we get that fucking Batman Superman where he's just scowling the entire time, it, like, administering threats to Bruce. The bat is dead. Bury it. Like, oh my gosh. I don't like that shit because we got the wrong turn that we were not, this is not where we were headed. Mm hmm. The only reason why we were headed there is because we were trying to keep up with Marvel. I can go on this shit all day, yeah. but Man of Steel, I feel like as a first Superman movie to like start it off and to start him off in a world that hates him, but he's rising above, I like that, and that's how I choose to see it. You have not swayed me on that one. Hey, I, I don't want to sway anybody because, again, they took the route that they took, and yeah. this is what we got. And this yep. is why movies are great, because we can all enjoy different things no, and talk course, about it. Right. What's next? Trivia time! All right. So, unfortunately, I'm sitting this one out, but I've concocted some questions for the two boys to answer. You guys are going to be competing head-to-head. -head. I will be keeping score on my trusty notepad. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I never got it. Oh, oh! I never got a chance to hit the button. Yeah. Who, oh wait, it's a hot take now, huh? So, so hot take. I want to hear your hot take. Amazing Spider-Man Two is one of the best Spider-Man movies. How crazy is that? How fucking crazy is that take? How fucking absurd is that? I don't. I don't fucking like that at all. I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't fucking like that at How all. How crazy is that? It somehow is more overbloated than Spider-Man Three. Yeah, I, I, I 100 percent will not sit here and say it has no problems. I just think the good outweighs the bad. I think the parents thing is not necessary. I think the Green Goblin thing is terrible. I just think the love story between him and Emma Stone. I think the action is better. I think Andrew Garfield is great. I think the ending fight scene is great. I think they handled her death really, really well. I think the good. I think it's more of a Spider-Man movie. I think the scene, the action scenes are the best action scenes we've ever gotten. I think it is more of a fun Spider-Man good movie, and it outweighs the bad. Do you put any of those scenes above the train sequence? Or he any or, 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 or he, any of the sequences in Into the Spider Verse. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Well, no, 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 no. We're I'm not talking about live I action. Think we okay, both, live action. I think okay. We I, both I do not really have okay. Spider Verse at one. Spider Verse is my favorite. Okay. Anime I said it's one about. of the favorite. I, I like I like Spider Man with yeah. Toby, Spider Man, and Spider Man Two, and I like Into the Spider Verse, and then right after that, it's Amazing Spider Man Two. Okay, but you I said mean, it was no, one no of the best home. live no action Spider Man movies of all, of all time. That's my hot you take. Can, you can't. This is a what? Isn't that crazy? That's my it's hot fucking take. Isn't crazy. Fucking nuts. He's a madman. It doesn't even beat most of the fucking action sequences from Spider-Man Three. I agree. No, Spider-Man Three uh, has some great action sequences. When Spider-Man is backflipping, catching a cop car, saving two people from being electrocuted, and landing in a Superman pose. Spider-Man Super is fighting Sandman and Venom at once. Yeah. With Green Goblin. No, yeah. but it's not. It's just reconciled it's with. Not, it's not as. It's not as good as the electro fight, as the as the as the whole opening scene where he's doing. He's Dodging bullets, catching virus bottles, and then like singing the Spider Man theme song wait, while wait. making this. You think that scene is better than fighting Sandman and Vittle Batman? I'm saying it's awesome, and it's Amazing Spider Man Isn't 2 gets crazy? too much hate. I think Spider Man 2 is. Amazing Spider Man 2 is clearly the worst one. No. Oh, yeah, clearly. I always say clearly. this before No Way Home, me and my friends back home watched all the Spider Man movies in prep. Back to back to back to back. And all three of us agreed that Amazing Spider Man 2 was at the top, and. Homecoming was near the bottom. Uh, All right. I, 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 I will say that, like, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is not unwatchable. In fact, it's, it's very watchable. No, it's not it's unwatchable. It's very watchable. Oh, my God. Yeah, right, here we go. It's like crazy. indigestion. How many questions do you have? I've got 15 regular ones and then and then seven different ones. Okay, let's just play first to seven. And these are all like nerdy movie questions. So some Marvel, some... Some regular movies, some, some DC, some it just cool. all over the place. No okay. Star Wars, because I know you're a casual Star Wars fan. Thank you. All, all right. right. Um... The, the rule is he can be reading the question whenever you want during the question. You can buzz, buzz in, okay, but, okay. but he, will, he will stop reading, reading the question. Okay, okay. So some of and these you won't might, tell me the rest of the yes, questions. Correct. Some okay. of these I might have options. Okay. Right? And so, yeah. So, But Got I it. actually don't have any multiple choice on this. I'll tell you guys that. I, I don't do multiple choice. All right. Here we go. Which MCU phase includes Ant-Man and the Wasp? Oh, phase three. Correct. Wow, he's quick. <laughs> oh, he's quick. <laughs> You got Ant-Man and... Yep. Like, and then that's, you, that's, gotta, all that's all you need. That's all you need. Oh, man. I, he beat me at the Marvel question. It's the only one I'm going to get. Who will be directing Superman Legacy? James Gunn. <laughs> You're wrong about that. <laughs> we <laughs> just <laughs> talked about it. The oldest Disney princess movie. Oh, no. Snow White. Dang Correct. it. Yes. <laughs> I know this shit. <laughs> Two to one. What superhero actor, so they play a superhero, starred in 2022's I don't know. <laughs> Go right ahead. Go right ahead. 2022. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, let's see, superhero movies in 2022. I'll give you 10 seconds. No, don't no, 10 seconds. Superhero movies in 2022. Holy shit. Uh, what's that? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Fuck. Simu Liu. No. 
Okay, continue. <laughs> Can what, I still go? No, what, no, no. What superhero actor starred in 2022's Slumberland? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Jason Momoa. I was just thinking Marvel, too. Yeah. Phil Collins famously made the music for Tarzan. I thought he was done. <laughs> I, I thought you he might was, be able to get this. You might be able to get this. Okay, he famously made the music. Oh, what other Disney movie did he make it for? Was that the rest of the question? Maybe. Oh, it's Brother Bear. Correct! Ah! That was amazing. Okay. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> was it two to three? All right. What year did Up came out, come out? 2009. Correct. Oh, I would have guessed 2010. 2009. It was nominated in 2010 at the Oscars. Correct. Best picture. Yes. Oscar nominated actress Uma Thurman has been in one comic book movie. What role did she play? One comic book movie. One comic book movie. One comic book movie. I'm, I'm looking for the role. One comic book movie role. Uh, so you got to think of the movie in there. My crazy super ex-girlfriend is Poison Ivy and Batman. Oh my oh god! Oh my gosh! Oh my fucking god! Oh my I gosh. blocked that movie out. I, I knew that. I blocked that movie I out. I knew that. I don't, I don't blame you. I don't think I about that, that I don't blame shit. You. you are not going to get this. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. This next one? Yes. I don't think about. I can't believe shit. I didn't get that. How many Robins are there? Kelly, Stephanie Brown, Dick, Jason, Tim Drake, Damian Wayne. Yep. Six. Correct. Cool. <clears throat> There's six Robins. Iron Man has the most screen time screen time in the MCU. Who is second place? Samuel L. Jackson. Wrong. Uh, he's made the most appearances. I w- he's I'm been a- in the most movies, but he doesn't have the screen time. I know this. I'm going to have to say Chris Evans. Wrong. Yeah. Ooh. Chris Evans is fourth place, believe it or not. What? Second place is Thor. See, he was my second answer. I forget who third place is. Fourth place is Is Chris Evans, Captain America. It might be Black Widow. Fifth place is Loki. Yeah. Because of the show. Because of the show. Oh, so this is current. Okay, yeah. yeah. This is current because Thor has more movies. Yes, exactly, because he got the fourth one and he's in all the Avengers. I didn't think about that. that. What sitcom starred Childish Gambino, Mr. Chow, and Clark Griswold? Community? Correct. Oh my gosh, I buzzed. <laughs> it's it's Kim John. It's um yeah. uh, what's Clark Mr. Griswold's L- name? What's his name? Chevy Chase and yes. then and then uh That's Donald Glover. <laughs> like, you threw me Dang off with the names. So I, I like, should have gotten that one. Because I was like I was Atlanta, buzzing. but I was like, no, it's gotta be community. Yeah. It was too yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say a bunch of roles that okay. a specific actor has played. Okay. And the first person to buzz in with that actor and say that actor's name gets the point. Got it. So name the actor. Camille Ray. Ellen Lin, Chun Li, Judge Linda Harris, Melinda May, Fennec Shand, Mulan. It's it's either it, I always get live uh, action Mulan, huh? Lucy Liu. Wrong. I keep the mess. It's the live action Mulan. I know it. it. I'm not answering that. Mulan. I'm guessing again. I, I mean, you're not going to get the point. Why not? Mulan. Three. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. Ming Na Wen. Ming Na Wen. Ming Na Wen played Mulan. Yeah. She oh, was the voice. Yeah, the she voice. was the voice of Mulan. Oh yeah. my god. And she's Fennec Shan and I'm Melinda such an May idiot. from Agent of We Shand. literally Star had this conversation Wars. the other Star day. Wars. No, Can't I, get the Star we Wars. just had this conversation. All right. Can't get the Star Wars. All right. Uh, here we go. I Name the actor. Talus. Sticky Beard. Art Rosebaum. Skips. Chucky. The Joker. Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill. Correct. God damn it. I, uh, when, I, when he said, when I heard Chucky, I was like, Brad Dourif? <laughs> <laughs> well, then you played like, him in the newer one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, fucking fuck. All right. Sharon Stone. Jinx. Sophia Alazar. Azwar. Excuse me. Catwoman. Storm. Halle Berry. Correct. Uh, if you are a little bit coming back, it is four to six. He needs one to win. Oh, Here's shit. the last name, the actor, and Don't then we go to that. the really hard questions. Okay. Detective Terry Seattle. Devin Banks. Deathstroke. Joe Manganiello. That's your guess? Joe Manganiello. No. Fucking. I will let, I will continue yeah. with you. Joe Bluth. Batman. Bojack Horseman. Oh, Will Arnett? Correct. Will Arnett was it? De- was he Deathstroke? He was Deathstroke. Where and, in and in the Teen Titans Go movie? Yes. <laughs> Great fucking movie. Fucking fuck. I, I was under the impression it. this was all movies. I'm sorry. I've screwed you. I've completely shit. screwed you. 
Here we go. Th these are all movie answers, and I don't think he will get any of them. So this is your chance to put him <laughs> okay. away. Handicapped. Who was the most... These are very hard questions. I didn't know any of... I, I knew two of these, but they're tough. Okay. Who was the most watched ac uh, actor on Letterboxd, the app of 2022? So this actor's movies were... Like, this actor was in the most watched. Like, ever? Uh, last year. For that. For, for last year. But it doesn't just have to be last year's movies. Tom Holland? No. That was a great fucking guess. Tom Cruise. Willem Dafoe. Wow. What? The most watched actor of last what? year. What? That's weird. All right, we've got two left. So you could either... Tie or... You could win, conceivably. Yeah, but I'm not going to get both of these. Name all nine, ten... Tarantino movies. <laughs> yeah, all right. He's my favorite director, so let's get this shit. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, right? Pulp Fiction. In order, he's doing this. Jackie Brown. Fucking, uh, what happened after Jackie Brown? It's not going to be in order. Kill Bills 1 and Volume 2. Mm -hmm. uh, Death Proof. Uh, Hateful Eight. Django Unchained. And Glorious Bastards. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Got it. And I'm also throw in Tony Scott's, uh, Tony Scott's fucking... Fuck, why am I blanking on the name now? True Romance. Because he wrote it. And what's his last one he's working on right now? Uh, it's the, called The, the Critic. The critic. Last Movie Critic. Yeah. Or The Movie Critic. Yeah. yeah. Good game. That was close. That was Great fun. Yeah. All right. Last thing we're doing. We always like to end with a bracket. We're going to do a, a whole contained bracket. So we've got 34 seeds. we got to go through all of them. 34? All th it's typically 32. Sorry, 32. There you go. This is best trilogies, movie, movie trilogies I love of ever. This. I love this. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This yes. is going to be good. Yes, oh, please. Oh, God. Uh, see, I have to... I already talked about one of my hot takes okay. before. But... Does he have another one? Do I have another one? Because I feel like this one that I'm about to say, everybody knows. Everybody knows my Princess Bride hot take. I hate Princess Bride so much. I don't like it. It's Terrible. not good. Terrible. It's not good. Terrible. <laughs> it's not good. It used to be in my top five favorite movies of all time. I tell people... What a all, great classic. I tell people all the time that it's dry chicken. It's fucking dry no, chicken. There's, no. There's little to it no score. It has charm. It no, has it comedy. doesn't. Knight's Tale has charm. I like Knight's like, Tale. Knight's Tale has charm. I like charm. Princess Bride more. Now, why do you like Princess Bride so much? It's just so fun. It's so fun. It's not fun. First it doesn't off, take itself too seriously. It's it's fantasy. You get a cool. I mean, it's it's cheesy. It's so cheesy, but it's such a classic, and it's a cult classic. You get I comedy. I feel like the only way to explain this is to say how much is it a classic. You're not giving me anything like really concrete. No, the, the comedy is hilarious. Mm. Inconceivable. Like inconceivable is funny. I think inconceivable. Is I like funny inconceivable. Every time. I love Inigo Montoya. If he was the main character of that movie, I would be all on board. But he's not the main character of that movie, and the fucking main character is fucking boring as shit. Whatever the fuck his name is, the one with the Wesley. Stuff. Wesley, fuck Wesley. No, and Wesley. his romance with that girl is so fucking contrived. It's so boring. It, okay, you don't have to have some intricate thing. It doesn't it's have to be. It's not. It's, it's, it's not a, even on a base it's level a heartwarming. Love fantasy it's not book. even on a base level heartwarming. It's not. She's stupid. He's a simp. Like he's just out here. Like she's oh, not stupid. As you she's wish. Not stupid. Like going rolling down a fucking hill. Say as the you The R.U.S.s wish. are hilarious. He right, Roger the giant. And it's the most boring fight ever. It's like. That is no, how it the, is. it's so the, weird. The, I agree with the everything you're saying. I just like it. The sword fight is great. Uh, the sword fight with it, it does Inigo Montoya is great. Yes, and then him at the end, and then the him standing up even though he stabbed you killed my father. Prepared. That was great. And then the comedy. Give us the gate key. I have no gate key. Fezzik, rip off his arms. Oh, you mean this gate key? Hilarious. <laughs> it wanted to be Monty Python and the Holy Grail so fucking bad. You just added Fred Savage and added his grandpa and made it a story, and it's not that fucking great. Wow. Just watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Hard disagree. You get all the comedy. I apologize. And you don't for pressing get a the stupid button. romance. Right. This one's gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. uh, easy ones. Let's try to get hit through. Uh, the Dark Knight, Star Wars sequels. The Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, Star no, no. Wars sequels. Are we talking about Ray? Yeah. Ray yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, The Dark Knight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now we've got trilogy. Yeah. Star Wars prequels. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tom's Spider Man trilogy. Tom's Spider Man trilogy. I'm I agree. Tom's Spider Man trilogy. I agree. Much better. Yes. John Wick. Okay. Men in Black. Ooh. I'm going John Ooh. Wick. I'm gonna go John Wick. I'm also going. I'm gonna go John, John Wick. Wick. Yes, I'm yeah. Because MIB hits third one kind of fell off a little bit. John Wick has been hit <sighs> yeah. every single time. Conjuring. Mm, this is good. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Okay. Conjuring is one of the best like horror franchises Trilogies. out That's there. That's another one that 
But the first two are bangers, and the third one fell. Third off Third one me. fell off yes. really, really hard. Yeah. 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 Planet of the Apes, Oceans. Which one? This is, this is the new the one. Two, 2011, oh, oh, Planet of the Apes, and all day. I guess Anybody who disagrees? What was it again? Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, no, you're correct. You're correct. War for the Planet I, of the Apes is my second favorite movie of I, all time. The first time I watched it, I watched all three of them with him a month ago. It's incredible. They're incredible. It's Caesar incredible. is awesome. Caesar should have been nominated for an acting at Oscar. Yes. I'm just saying. Andy Circus in that role. Yes. Yes, but they don't. They don't, they don't respect him for the, for they the don't motion respect capture, him. which is ridiculous. He's absolutely fantastic. So he's emoting. He's fu he carries that movie as a fucking ape. absolutely. And, oh, also I will say this as well. Toby Kebbell is Koba in the fucking is second incredible. one. Incredible, incredible. I'm just saying, and bro. And Steve Zahn in the third one, and the the woman I forget her name. I'm so sorry, but as Maurice is incredible. I'm telling you, man, those movies are fucking amazing. They're amazing. They're it, you're right. So it's horseshit that they they didn't win any Oscars. He's gonna Andy Serkis is gonna get some kind of supporting role where he's gonna be good. He's not gonna be great. He's not gonna be better than everybody else. And they're gonna give it get to him Oscar as a because of Caesar. <laughs> because of Caesar. Because exactly. they're gonna Andy be Andy Serkis like, is one of his favorite actors, and I tell you, Andy Serkis is absolutely actor. great. That's and my, I feel like Caesar man. Caesar is his crown. Is his crazy? Exactly. Oh my! Oh, this Just is saying. why we brought him on. Oh my God! Yes. A plus. Cool. There we go. Godfather versus Alien. Oh. oh, so you have two very terrible third, movie. third movies <laughs> yeah. like that. But two very good I've only, I've only seen parts of both of these. However, so. I will give it to, and I know people are gonna hate because the first two Godfathers are masterpieces. Well, but if we're talking, if we're gonna, if we're talking trilogies, if we're talking trilogies, Aliens has. Two masterpieces as well. Uh huh. And the David Fincher director's cut of Alien Three actually is not bad. Plus, it gives us plus. You what fine is, with that? What is I'm the, gonna side with him. What is the iconic moment in Godfather Three? You can't think of it. The iconic moment in Aliens Three, yeah. with Ripley in the face. Well, I, the iconic moment of uh, Godfather Three is Sofia Coppola's terrible dying scene. Is that <laughs> but not iconic for the right reason? No, no, exactly. You're right. It's terrible. So you got to so give it to Alien. I, I don't know. Godfather 1. I'm not as big of a fan of Godfather 2 as everybody else is. Yeah. That might be a hot take. I'm sorry, film bros. Yeah. But um, uh, 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 I, I think Godfather 1 is one of the best movies of all time. And I just, it's I tough. Mean, I mean, seriously, argue, arguable for... You could argue that two of those movies can carry any trilogy battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, like the fact that you have also two masterpieces in Alien and Aliens, mm -hmm. and then Alien Three is like bad, but there's still some really really good stuff in it that you remember. Right. You got to give it. Look, to you Alien. you guys voted Alien, so Mission Impossible Four through Six. Yes, the Bourne trilogy. I'm going Bourne. I love the Bourne. I'm movie. going Mission Impossible. Clearly, no. I'm gonna go with Mission Impossible Four through Six over yes. the Bourne trilogy. Yes, thank yeah, you. I'm go the Bourne yes. ultimatum, yeah. Bourne identity is yeah, so good. No, the no. fact that Tom Cruise is still fucking carrying that franchise yes, at, for, into Four through Six, like that's. And you gotta yeah. consider Henry Cavill is Six. And, oh yeah, I didn't even think that, about that. That's Six, and Five is um, a Rogue Nation, which is a phenomenal movie. That's the We're one talking where about he's the Mumbai, on the, on, the, the on, Mumbai on, building. No, 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 that's Four. That's so you get all three of them. Yeah, you get even better. Like it's it's. So good, Mission Impossible, easily yeah. for me. Rush yeah. Hour, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I, I love all the. Rush I love hours, Rush Hours. Third one is not that great, but Toy Story: How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, see, this is tough. This is what tough. This the is, fuck? This did is you tough. Do? This is hard. This is hard. This, this is, is hard. Really however, hard. This is really hard. however, I feel like there was a lot more catharsis and a lot more beauty in Toy Story Three than in How to Train Your Dragon Three. Yeah, because I don't feel like but it's no, close. Here's like, I, nobody talk as great as that movie as nobody talks about How to Train Your Dragon's third movie. Like they don't talk about the ending. They don't talk about how it makes them feel. Toy it's Story. True. Toy Story Three had a better ending. Yeah, but then they screwed it up with Toy Story Four. Don't don't do, look. We can fight about this right now, but. They screwed that, it up with that, Toy Story 4. I don't understand your take. First off, we can get into it after this bracket because I know uh, we got to get into the bracket because yeah. we're talking about the trilogy. Toy Story 4 is the epilogue that gives Woody the ending that he needed. and it. So how do you feel about Toy Story 5? I'm... Yeah, like, I'm like now you're pushing it. Now I'm like, now you're pushing it. It's like Which one are you going with? Toy Story or How to Train Your Dragon? I, I just... My whole thing is, is I think that... To, uh, how to Train Your Dragon one and two are better than Toy Story one and two. Ooh, that's a hot. Take. But but Toy Story three I, is is in another level of animated movie than any of the How to Train Your Dragon movies for me personally. So I have to give it to Toy Story three. What are you doing? I mean, I have to you give it to Toy you Story. You know, I'm giving it to Toy Story. Like Toy Story, like the first two, I would. You can argue which ones are better. I'm not gonna definitively say that How to Train Your Dragons one and two are better than How to Train Your uh, Toy Stories one and two, mm -hmm. two and three. Because if you watch one, the writing in that fucking script is fucking spot it's on. It's, it's fucking tight. tight. It's tight. It's fucking it moves. tight. That movie moves. You're it's right. It's fucking tight. Uh, I don't think there's nothing in the first How to Train Your Dragon that has that amount of writing. However, the animation, the flying scenes, and the score itself is absolutely great. I'm still giving it to Toy Story because I feel like all three of those movies are masterpieces. Train, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, Indiana Jones, Captain America. 
Yikes. Indiana Jones. I think I'm doing that too. I mean, Winter Soldier. Nice. Winter Soldier really bumps Captain America it up does. for me. And Civil it does. War. First of First Avenger is, is as much as I love First Avenger in my heart. It doesn't stand up to any of the Raiders. Indiana Jones. Temple of Doom goes down a little bit, but then freaking uh, Last Crusade. First Avenger bites fucking uh, <laughs> fucking Indiana yeah. Jones at a couple. Points. I'm, we're both going Indiana. Yep, I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm down with that. Terminator Fistful of Dollars. Oh my oh. God. Okay, wait, because Terminator Three is bad. But one and two are two are my favorite action movies of all time. Great picks. Two is fistful. two is I'm, probably my favorite. I'm, I'm going, going Terminator. Oh, Fuck. Clint Eastwood. Uh, hold up, maybe because here's the thing. I love. I have to go. Uh, Terminator. I I actually like. I, this you know is what? Take. I like Terminator one better than two. I love two, but I like Terminator one better than two. Uh, I I don't. I I have to go Terminator. I love Terminator. Hold on, because I'm like now. This is like we're back to the Godfather argument. Whereas I do the first two carry, carry the trilogy enough over Fistful of Dollars, and I'm thinking of Fistful of Dollars. Iconic character. Were all the movies great though? Like, were all the movies great, or were they squeezing it? And I think you could argue that they were squeezing Fistful of Dollars because that's just what they were doing with Westerns. So I'm a, I'm a go, no, I'm nuts. Terminator 1's a masterpiece. Terminator 2's a masterpiece. Yes. I'm going to go with the Terminator franchise. Yes. I'm go with Terminator. The before trilogy, Kung Fu Panda. Oh, my so God. Before, this is hard. Before Sunrise, this is hard. yeah. All this them. is hard because Kung Fu Panda I haven't seen is this. Great. So I'm voting Kung Fu Panda because Kung Fu Panda 2 is one of my favorite animated movies of all time. You need to watch the before trilogy. I, I will. Because I'm going to go with the before. I'm going to go with the before. The reason why is because each movie has like a considerable gap between them. And each movie plays into that gap. Okay. It's like they meet. Every, and They're they, great. Like, it's, Ethan it, Hawke is phenomenal. Kung, Hawk Kung Fu Panda man. 2 also suffers from the first two being good and then the third one falling a little bit for me. Uh, yeah. I didn't like the third one as much. I, I unfortunately, I'm going to give it to uh, before. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's got to be before. Matrix. Iron Man. Oh, how did these oh, yeah, two get yeah. paired up when we had all those Iron other Man. tough matchups? Iron Man. Iron Man. It's Iron Man. It's Iron Man. Matrix 2 I think has I, some redeeming qualities. Matrix 3 is a heaping pile of dog shit. True. Uh, Iron Man 1 changed the game in superhero movies. That's true. In his era. Iron Man 2, I think, is also like a piece of shit. I don't like Iron Man 2. However, Iron Man 3, I love me some Iron Man 3. Iron I love me great. some Shane Black. I think the first Matrix is the best movie of the six, with a close follow-up Wait, which with one? Iron Man. The first Matrix okay. is the best movie of the six movies, like, like all three Matrix movies and all three Iron Man movies. Are you talking about Animatrix 2? Are you including that? No. No, just the Iron Man trilogy and the Matrix trilogy. He means oh, not in of that the six franchise, movies. like of the six movies of the six. Oh, the yeah, trilogy. yeah. Matrix is the best one of all of these. I actually... But as far as like a trilogy, like a... I I'm gonna go Iron Man here, and it's pretty easy for me here because I it actually was easy for me, yeah. I'm not that big of a Matrix guy. I don't think the first one is as good as everybody says. I think it is. It's just that I'm not that big of a Matrix guy either. It's like I recognize the greatness of it. The well, newest one. The newest one was so unbelievable. I didn't like that. <laughs> it was yeah, so no. bad. I I couldn't follow. I, I don't normally like. It's very rare for me to come out of a movie and be like, "Oh my gosh, holy crap, that was bad." <laughs> but I did with that one. I All walked right. out of the IMAX going like, whoa. Cornetto Trilogy, Austin Powers. Cornetto, Cornetto Trilogy. Cornetto. What, easily, hey, easy. the best comedy trilogy <laughs> of Love all time. It. Which one's your favorite? Oh, The Shaun of the Dead. Me too. Shaun of the fucking Dead. Me too. It's my I, favorite zombie movie of all time. Me too. And I'm all of my friends, they're all Hot Fuzz or World's End people. And I love those movies. First off. But Sha Shaun of the Dead is a masterpiece. Anybody class. who picks World it, World's End as the best of that trilogy, like, needs to have their head examined. That's interesting. You could argue about Hot Fuzz and yeah. Shaun of the Dead, but I love Shaun of the Dead. Because it's a zombie movie that doesn't take itself too seriously, it's but it also takes itself yep. very seriously. It's so good. A dude gets his fucking guts ripped yep. out, like fucking getting carried through the window. Oh man, it's awesome. Toby Spider Man trilogy, okay. Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm gonna say Toby. Yep, yeah, me too. I'm gonna say yeah. Toby. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because you get one good movie versus two. Mm -hmm. Fast Five through Seven. I put Fast and Furious. He put this one. There. Oh, but it's going up against the Star Wars original trilogy. Oh, you gotta do Star Wars. Yeah, I gotta do Star you gotta Wars. Do Star Wars. Those yeah. are good fast movies. All right, we're back. Uh, we're first, Those are the good stuff. We're through the first round. So now we are on right. round two. So now we got Dark Knight versus Spider Man Tom. Dark, Dark Knight versus Dark Knight, yeah. It's Dark, Dark Knight. Knight. Easy. Okay. Uh, John Wick, Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Oh my God, that's hard. I just like I just went I'm off of like John instinct. Wick. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wick. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going back to the future. Oh my God. I just, the first one is so good. So it's I'm the same thing as Star Wars. It's like, I can't not vote 
Star Wars against so many things that's, that's because a fair pick. Here, here's like, so that's, I gotta go back to. The I am future. not. I'm not gonna lie. As great as like John Wick is, I sometimes fall asleep on John Wick two and three. Sometimes Ooh, I wow. sometimes do. I sometimes do. I put it on and I'm like, this is fucking great. And then boom, I'm out. I never do that with Back to the Future. Never. Like yeah, fair enough. it's so, too iconic. Yeah. Ooh, here we go. Planet of the Apes, Alien. Planet of the Apes. <gasps> I'm going Planet of the Apes. I'm going Planet, I'm going of, the Apes Planet of the Apes because the trilogy, every yeah, movie of those three, hits, all which three one of, hits. Of the three is your favorite. Oh, it's got to be. Uh, is the second one uh, Dawn, which is the one Dawn. with Koba. It's got to be Dawn Koba's with Koba. Great. Koba's that, a great. That's villain. the popular pick. My yeah. favorite is the third one. I just love the uh, third one's great. And it's, it's great. The ending is amazing too. It's it's a great way to cap off that trilogy, but Cobra, bro, like, uh, it, he's by far the best villain. Plus, it's and like the, it's, it's the human ape relations, like like just the tenseness of it all. Like I, the Koba, fact that Cobra like, screwed everything and Koba up. screws everything up. Like I, and he does it so. Oh my god, I love. Fucking I Koba. just love the ramifications of that in three, and then you still see him. Yes. He's still coming to him in his nightmares yes. and stuff. I, oh, I love that. It's the Killmonger effect. Oh, yeah, Cobra was brilliant. Killmonger before yeah, Killmonger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Killmonger. Uh, Mission no, Impossible no. four through six, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Okay. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You I love Mission Impossible. Impossible. I would have picked Mission Impossible. Well, you Impossible. haven't seen the Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen oh, Lord of the Rings. Rings. No. Ooh, my goodness. Toy Story. Indiana Jones. I'm going to say Toy Story. Wow. And I'm going to say that confident. I'm, I'm going to say Indiana Jones. I'm going. I'm, oh Don't my gosh. you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare. So here's dare. the issue. I'm about to share a hot take I haven't shared yet. I do not like Raiders. Oh. <gasps> okay, we can't. We can't do that. <laughs> It's okay. by it's by far my least favorite Indiana Jones movie. I like it less than Kill the Crystal Skull. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Oh! Well, here's the thing. I like Crystal Skull. I like Crystal Skull. <laughs> I like Crystal Skull. I like Crystal Skull. I like Crystal Skull. It's so fun. Here's the thing. I can't not, believe I'm sitting with, uh, with two people on this podcast here's that are like, saying Crystal Skull is good. Look, here's the thing. <laughs> I before I became a movie person, like I was not like a diehard like Indiana Jones person. It's because yeah. my Indiana Jones is fucking the Mummy. That was like yeah, what I grew yeah. up with. That's what I grew up with. So like shout I saw out Brendan Indiana, Fraser. Shout out Brendan Fraser. Congratulations, buddy. Yes. But so when I by the time I saw Indiana Jones, they were just like, oh, mummy adjacent type movies. It's the original. I get it. Whatever. Yeah. And so when I see like fucking the swinging through the trees with Shia, Shia LaBeouf, who I grew up with, it just changed everything for me. It was gotcha. you know, but wow. it's not as good as don't that take is still fucking hot. So so I I Last Crusade is by far my favorite, and then it goes Temple of Doom. And then a nice big gap, and then Crystal Skull, and then barely beating Raiders. I just, I'm, I've known this take. I, you will learn this. I don't think my takes are hot until I say them and I get bullied. I didn't know that so many people liked Moon Knight. Yeah, it's out here going through life like, dude, 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 Raiders all, suck. All of my friends at home hated Shang-Chi. We all walked out and we were like, this was a bad movie. And we were all in unit. I thought everybody hated that movie until the internet bullied me and are still bullying me for it. But Raiders, I knew was a hot take because everybody showed it to me and I was like, this isn't that exciting. And then I saw Temple and I was like, oh, this is good. And then I saw Last Crusade and I was like, oh, this is great. And then I went back to Raiders and I was like, still. How the fuck do you not like Raiders? Yeah, so so I'm 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 leaning towards Toy Story because I think I that mean, Toy we're Story at the same, is more complete to we're me. We're at the same destination, so, but the Story. path it took to get there is <laughs> wildly different. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I kind of want to go back and say, Indiana Jones, but no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Terminator, the before trilogy. Mm. Terminator. Ter oh, man. Very easily. Wait, wait, wait. I know Terminator Three isn't Wait. as good, as, and Before is complete. But all, all three of them the are so good. Is, it it is doesn't. Great. Terminator Two, my, Terminator One might be my favorite uh, you know action movie of all time, and Terminator Two is probably the best action movie. You of know all what? Time. I will. I will say that Terminators One and Two probably does carry over the Before. Because if I have to choose what yeah. I'm gonna watch, and you say like which trilogy mm -hmm. are you gonna watch? I'm gonna have to kick in the enjoyability factor, and I will say Terminator. Terminator. Yes. I will acknowledge that Before is better. But yeah, I will yeah, acknowledge that it's better. It's more complete, but but Terminator, man, those two Terminators, Iron Man, the Cornetto trilogy. That's, oh, yeah. that's me. Iron Man of the Cornetto tr trilogy. Oh, Cornetto. Uh, yeah, easily. Iron Cornetto, easily for me. Yeah, yep. Iron Man two is. He's not never seen them, and so he's just so Cornetto. The Toby. In the oh my goodness. Seat of his pants. The Toby uh, Spider Man trilogy, Star Wars original trilogy. <sighs> Star Wars. Star Wars. <sighs> It's hurt, it's it is, it hurts, it, it, it to, hurts to see my boy go. I'm sorry because I'm not a just, Star Wars fan. No, yeah. And Toby and Spider Man Two literally made me what I am today. Like yeah. it literally set me on the path. Well, let's just go based on like uh, our phone cases. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> toss. I think New New Hope is, in my opinion, the most important movie of all time. And in I my think so. opinion, I think Empire so. Strikes Back is the best movie. And of all time, I, so. and I, it's it's incredible. Yeah. The Dark Knight, Back to the Future. 
Back to the Future. Oh, I'm going Dark, Dark Knight Rises is I'm... not good. Yeah! It's not yeah! fucking good. I'm sorry. Go. I'm sorry. The movie guy I'm agrees with me. I'm fucking sorry. The Dark Knight Rises is not fucking good. It has a lot of fucking plot holes. One of which, dude coming out of a fucking hole to go halfway across the world and fucking do the time to make a fucking bat signal with no fucking equipment. And then all the fucking cops go into a hole. Why do you put all your police force there? It's just, and then there's also like a hundred, like no character development for Bruce Wayne, but it takes like a hundred hours to get Batman out of that shit. It's just not as good. We literally filmed him the earlier episode we shot today. Literally, I was just bullying him for that Dark Knight Rises take, and now here you are supporting Dark Knight Rises. Him. So I will go with you. Back to the Future. Oh my God! That was a failure to win. This. Sorry, no. Yeah, oh no. My they should. They should have made a good they third movie. Made Dark Knight Rises yeah. better. Oh they should have made Planet God. of the Apes. Lord of the Rings. Mm. Oh, that's tough. I'm going Planet of the Apes. That's tough. That is tough. Lord of the Rings is like more classic and like important, important and like better. But Planet of the Apes, very surprisingly good and very fun to watch. And people don't talk about it, give it no. the respect that it deserves. No, but they it is quietly the great... made a ton of money. Yes, because they're still making them, which is great. Fucking fuck, man! Hold on. You know what? I'm gonna give it the respect it deserves. I'm Let's go. Planet of the hey. Apes. Over Lord of the Rings. You heard it here. Go Look. watch you it. You heard it and here. I said on record, Lord of the Rings is like probably the best trilogy of all time. Probably. I said that, but Lord, look, we need to start respecting Planet of the Apes yes. as a trilogy. Yes. We're making a stand. I'm, I'm making a stand right fucking now. Yeah. Toy Story Terminator. <sighs> look, I've all, I've talked about how the first two carry. However, that Toy Story trilogy is a three-headed monster. It's I a three-headed fucking monster. I agree with you. Toy Story's moving on. When she used to love me, <laughs> everything was beautiful. beautiful. Oh, Cornetto. Star Wars OT. Original. Star Wars. Mm, Star Wars. Cool. Yeah. All right. right. That we're getting hurts down too. to it. This is the quarterfinal. Yeah, love yeah I love right. Cornetto, but yeah, I'm glad I made it this far. Yeah. No, it, it, I bet, yeah, it's like, good job, dude. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. Did good. We got three more matchups. The quarterfinals Shit. and then the finals. Or the semifinals. Okay. Back to the future. Okay. Planet of the Apes. <gasps> I'm going Planet of the Apes. <laughs> oh my to. god. I have to. Oh my god. Sorry, Robert Zemeckis. I'm so sorry. It's Planet of the Apes. Yeah! Caesar! 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 Yes! Oh, okay. yes. Toy Story. Star Wars original trilogy. Oh, what? This is fucking tough. This is I'm fucking going Star tough. Wars. I have to go I, Star Wars. Here's, look. It's, it's got, yeah. It's got empires. But in. but no. I do want to say, no. With Star Wars, we are doing. It's the same thing as all the other ones. Just Return of the Jedi is better than Terminator Three and all those. But Return of the Jedi is a huge drop off. Toy Story Three uh, is Toy all Story three of them doesn't good. have any drop offs. No, it only gets better. That's correct. Would That's you rather have a trilogy that gets better or there's drop off? Uh, but I, I just the highs of the first two Star Wars. And I think Return of the, the Jedi is good. Kind of like the so, Return of the so Jedi what are is you good because that's the deciding factor. Look, you're going Toy it's, Story. It's, I'm going Star. Toy Wars. Story is extra quotable. It is a story about Here's man's the mortality. Here's the thing. And they concluded that mortality Here's in a thing. very good way. Here's the thing. Toy Story 3, one of the greatest endings of any trilogy ever. Yes. It's got some of the most iconic characters ever. Yes. Woody, Buzz. Yes. Toy Story started off the Pixar Disney yes. franchise. Yes. But here's the thing. Yes. A New Hope started off. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars, baby. Everything. It started off everything. Yes. And Empires kept it going. Yeah. I'm going off. First off. <laughs> Star Wars isn't that great today, guys. Let's just say that. that I mean, that's true, but neither is Pixar. That's not a good neither is Pixar. But it, the, the, this is when the drop off happened Toy Story 3, and then boom, because they couldn't really match up with it. That's true. Toy Story 3 was so good, it almost. I, I was think there's some really good stuff after Toy Story 3, though. I really oh, like yeah. Coco. Inside Out, Coco. Uh, it's, Coco is my top Pixar movie ever. Really? Coco is my top that's Pixar movie wow. ever. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. I will fucking find it. It's in my top five, shit. but like, it's wow. It's in my I top. Wow. It's in my fucking top. Every time I watch that movie, I always find something new with it. I feel like it's the most emotionally devastating and the most emotionally Absolutely. rewarding as well. Yep. It has a deeper message about fucking death, the yep. afterlife, legacy, family. Yep. It lit music, musically yes. amazing, Bangers. animation wise, incredible. Yep. Like also, how many movies like that do we get that like really celebrate a culture? Yeah. And, yep. and fucking Coco does that yep. and then also I don't even want to get into the title of Coco because everything leads back to the character of Coco and you don't really fucking know it yep. until you until get to the, the end, end. Yep. fucking Coco is fucking it it yep. is fucking it the crowning shit. of Pixar I love Coco I'm finals so, so wait do we get rid of Toy Story 3 Star Wars. Wars. Oh, no. Star Wars. I'm sorry oh, here we go yeah, okay. I know my answer if, if Star Wars no way no, no I know everyone, my answer here is the finals of our best trilogy of all time 
I mean, we had some hard fought battles in here. Yeah. There, there are a bunch of trilogies that definitely deserve to be Sorry, here. Boys. But we have landed on Planet of the Apes mm -hmm. and Star Wars original trilogy. May, may I speak before we speak? Yep. I'm proud of us, first of all. Yes. This was an awesome bracket. This was a lot of fun. We celebrated a lot of great trilogies up here. But there has never been a trilogy in the modern filmmaking era that has captivated me or many audiences the way that Planet of the Apes has. That's my vote, baby. It's Planet of the Apes. You got to give it to them. Across the board, the performances... The di the writing, the directing, those movies are masterpieces, and all three of them are great. I'll go, and then we'll see what happens. For the same reason that I put Star Wars over Toy Story, the cultural impact, the fact that Empire is in there, and Empire is better than all three of those movies. Correct. I am going to say Star Wars Original Trilogy. Okay. Sure. All right. What we got? I think this answer is like pretty obvious, because when you want to talk about iconography, what I'm about to say is up there with some of the most iconic pieces of filmmaking, characters, music, cinematography, ever. There is only, of all movies, one empire that I recognize. This trilogy has a scruffy person at its center. And I will tune in to go back to this journey again and again and again. The person who owns this empire is fucking Caesar. Yes! Yeah! That was amazing! Caesar! Oh my god! The only empire Let's I recognize go. is the one started by Caesar the fucking ape. ape. Yes! Let's go! Yes! Hey, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. That was amazing! You, that was fucking amazing! Y'all thought I was going with the, the other thing. Wars. Fucking oh my gosh, Planet of the amazing. Apes, baby. Oh my gosh. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow Straw Hat if you are not. Um, uh, we, he, we're sure you are. Yeah, he, he's amazing. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Join the uh, Follow on Instagram. Join the Discord. Let us know about the Patreon. If you want to be involved in stuff like this, fan segments, letting us, letting y'all decide what we debate about, letting y'all decide the brackets, all of that, go follow us on everything. And um, let's, let's end it off with um, Alex Button. Uh, I'll go with the classics. Shang-Chi's a bad movie. No!